So fun fact about me, uh, my dad is a pilot and my mom was a flight attendant. So my love language is long distance. <laughs> Edgy humor. <laughs> uh, Valentine's Day was yesterday and uh, I feel like dating is, uh, is hard, but I, I especially feel bad for guys in straight relationships because I feel like there's pressure on you to make the first move. You gotta have like a pickup line in your back pocket at all times, which is crazy because you guys are saying the most out of pocket stuff I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> like for example, I would never have the confidence to go up to a guy that I thought was hot and be like, hey. <laughs> I couldn't do it, I wouldn't do it, I couldn't. Sometimes I feel like guys don't know what girls are into though. I think you all think that we want Prince Charming, but all we really want is Bob the Builder. <laughs> you don't have to kiss me in my sleep, just help me out around the house. That'll do. I feel like some people related to that one. You watch yourself at home, men. Yeah. Uh, I feel like dating used to be easier back like 100 years ago. We don't have meat cutes anymore, you know? But like grandpa saw grandma for the first time and thought, wow, she's the one. Grandma was looking at Grandpa and thinking, wow, I'm the luckiest nine-year-old alive. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I feel like Grandma and Grandpa never had to deal with, like, drunk dials either. Clap it up if you've ever gotten a drunk call from an ex before. A couple of you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never gotten one of those. i never gotten one. I've gotten something better, though. Like, have you guys ever had a, a voicemail left on your phone from the YMCA asking you to come back because you found a bigger, better gym? <laughs> the YMCA is kind of like an annoying ex, though, because they ask for money that you're not going to get back. And I'm uncomfortable taking my clothes off in their presence. <laughs> Either way, my response is the same, you know? Sorry, I'm just not looking for young Christian men anymore. <laughs> I have anxiety, not an official diagnosis, I just like to fit in. I, everyone in my generation is anxious, right? What else can you expect when there's like trickle down traumanomics? It's, it's tough, it's tough. Because I have anxiety, I like to over prepare for things. Like for example, a couple months ago, I got a surgery and the doctor told me that I couldn't have sex for two weeks after the surgery. I didn't have sex for 22 years before the surgery. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure, you know. I'm, a, I'm a working on getting my private pilot's license right now. You could clap for that, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's hard though, it's hard. There's a lot of like strict rules and hoops you have to jump through if you've ever taken antidepressants or seen a therapist because nothing makes you feel safer than knowing that your pilot is unmedicated and bottling everything up inside. <laughs> also, you have to have 1,500 hours of flight time if you want to work for a big airline like Delta or American. That makes sense, they want you to be prepared, experienced. That's why at Spirit Airlines, they require that you have zero hours whatsoever. <laughs> if you've even been a passenger on a plane before, they won't let you apply, I tried. <laughs> I feel like being a pilot would really help with my stand-up career, though, you know? I like to think that passengers are just an audience that can't leave. <laughs> uh, hello, passengers. On our trip to Auckland today, your only source of in-flight entertainment is going to be me, working on brand new material for the next 17 hours. <laughs> Buckle up, and thank you for choosing Spirit Airlines. <laughs> I'm a really indecisive person. I know, I sound great, <laughs> I'm awesome. But I feel like this, uh, this isn't the best quality to have when you wanna be a pilot. The only job I could think of where it would be worse is like the guy who pulls the lever in that trolley problem. <laughs> it's a crazy dilemma to dump on a 14 year old at like 10 in the morning, by the way. <laughs> like you finish your nachos and chocolate milk at lunch and then you have to decide which side of the tracks to murder someone on. <laughs> I hope I'm never in that situation. But you know, if I ever am, I wanna be prepared for it. So I've been bowling a lot recently. I've been working on my 7-10 split so that when the time comes, I can hit them both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my parents are boomers. Clap it up for the boomers. 
Yeah, they've had it. They've had it too hard for far too long. I think. No, I love my parents a lot, but sometimes that uh, that generational difference is really, really obvious. Like one time when I was a kid, my dad and I were grabbing lunch, and uh, we overheard this guy talking about wanting to motorboat with his girlfriend, and I had to explain to my dad what that meant. This has nothing to do with his age and everything to do with the fact that he played clarinet in high school. <laughs> no, I love my dad. He's gonna watch this later and be pissed. <laughs> I love my dad. I love my mom too. My mom is cooler than my dad. She used to be a marine, and uh, now she's a teacher. So her risk of getting shot at work has only gone up. <laughs> no, my mom's cool. She's cool. She can do literally anything she sets her mind to. Except for remain calm in any situation ever. <laughs> she cannot do that. She can't. If she were ever in that trolley problem, she would go off the rails before the train does. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I love my mom a lot, though. She was uh, not too long ago diagnosed with heart failure. This isn't trauma dumping, it's world building, okay? <laughs> she wasn't just diagnosed with heart failure, she was diagnosed with severe heart failure. Because she's an overachiever. Yeah. But uh, luckily, she's been taking medication and her condition has been improving. And I think that just goes to, yeah, it just goes to show how powerful a white person's lack of taste is. We even have to take our heart failure mild. It's, it's fun, it's fun. Speaking of boomers, I want to talk about pronouns for a second. I think they're like a really fun, safe, easy topic that no one ever gets upset over, you know? <laughs> I don't know why people get so scared of pronouns. Because, I mean, prepositions are way more confusing when you think about it. <laughs> nah. But sometimes it can be confusing. Like, they have these new pronouns now. Have you guys gotten that software update yet? <laughs> they have these new ones, which is fine. You know, you should be able to go by whatever you want. But, like, I saw one the other day that was spelled I-R. And I just thought that was every woman from Texas. Like, I saw her over there. Like... <laughs> There's a lot of things that I'm confused about. I'm kind of dumb. <laughs> I don't get that expression, fall down seven times, get up eight. I feel like if something knocks you down seven times, you should stay on the ground. <laughs> I feel like you'll be safer down there. I don't get that joke, what's a dentist's favorite time of day? Tooth hurty? Why would your dentist want your tooth to hurt? That's like saying a doctor's favorite star sign is cancer. <laughs> Now that I think about it, I don't really get astrology because I have a twin brother and despite being born a minute apart, we could not be more different. All right, I'm Burnett, he's blonde. I get tan in the summer, he doesn't. I'm progressive, he thinks January 6th was nuanced. <laughs> Subtle differences. Can the moon and the stars explain that? No. It was Ben Shapiro and Louder with Crowder getting into his algorithm in high school. That's, that's what happened there. Also, my birthday was premeditated. You know, like a murder. <laughs> My mom scheduled her C-section, so I don't really have a birthday. I have an excavation date. <laughs> no, I think the real reason that I hate astrology is just because I'm bitter. Because I'm a Virgo, which is like the unseasoned chicken of astrological signs. Everyone else is like, oh, I'm a Pisces, I'm easygoing. I'm a Leo, I'm bold. I'm a Scorpio, I'll burn your house down if you don't give me enough attention. <laughs> fun, quirky things like that. I'm just like, oh, I'm a Virgo. I'm organized. <laughs> That's so lame. And the worst part of this is, is I was talking to my friend who's really, really into horoscopes. I was explaining all this to her. And she just goes, you don't believe? <laughs> That's so Virgo of you. <laughs> I don't believe in astrology. I don't believe in evolution. I think it's real, I just don't support it. <laughs> I think the world would be better if we were all still amoebas. They don't make nuclear weapons or podcasts, you know? <laughs> there are a couple animals that have me questioning evolution, just a little bit. Because like, what on God's green and polluted earth caused a hammerhead shark to be built like an iPhone on a selfie stick? <laughs> or I guess a hammer, maybe, that would be a better analogy. <laughs> But they can't even see in front of them. How could that be an evolutionary advantage? That's like going to a car dealership and the guy's like, yeah, 
yeah, like we blacked out the front windshield, but the side mirrors are really good, relax. <laughs> Wouldn't get in the car. Or camels, instead of evolving to have a double-decker backpack full of water jugs, have you tried just leaving the desert? <laughs> really, no one's thought of this by now? <laughs> Moses got the Jews out in 40 years and you've had thousands. Like, <laughs> Why are you still there? <laughs> don't even get me started on wiener dogs, okay? I don't know why corgis are the royal breed when wiener dogs are the ones that look inbred. <laughs> ha. <laughs> Thank you, Lazarus. <laughs> this is just the kind of stuff that happens when we live in a world that's killing the bees but worships the wasps. Just a little white Anglo-Saxon Protestant humor for you. It's tough. I, uh, I don't really understand why it seems like there's more people that identify as autistic than there used to be. <laughs> no, it's okay. I can talk about this because I'm left-handed and a similar thing happened to my people like 100 years ago, so <laughs> it's fine. No, I think the lack of stigma is cool. I think it's great. Uh, neurodivergent people should be accepted into society. I, just, I question the self-diagnosis aspect of it just a little bit. Like, I think there's too many people who are going on TikTok and doing a put a finger down challenge and convincing themselves they're autistic because they've binged The Office and Googled something. <laughs> nobody does that with other stuff, you know? Nobody takes a TikTok test and starts identifying as Puerto Rican. They take a 23andMe test and start identifying as Native American. That's, that's what they do. We've all met someone like that, right? Someone that's like, uh, I'm 2% Cherokee and I'm 1.5% Iroquois. Okay, well, you're still 96.5% annoying, so <laughs> I don't care. My parents did one of those DNA tests on our dog. You, you looked at me and assumed correctly, it's okay. We found out he's half German Shepherd, 30% Norwegian Elk Hound. Go Vikings! 18% Rottweiler, that's my mom's side. And like 2% Chihuahua. I don't go around telling people I have a 75-pound Chihuahua. I don't get why old people are so grumpy all the time. It's like, what do you have to be upset about, man? You're a homeowner. <laughs> you bought your house in 1952 for the price of an Aldi's candle. <laughs> and now it's worth the entire Aldi's franchise. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't go to Harvard and study generational wealth. Because <laughs> you know, by the time I'm that age, I'm gonna be saying dumb stuff like, hey kids, get off my landlord's lawn. <laughs> I just don't think that's going to hit as hard. Awesome. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much.